Congressional Black Caucus does not have your best interest at heart, black folks. They want us disarmed and compliant when the UN trucks come in to haul our asses out of our homes. As tensions continue to mount in the streets across America, the CBC is wanting us vulnerable and unable to bear arms against an oppressive regime. It is the CBC's stance that gun violence played a role in the deaths of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, and gun control laws need to be stricter. They are right. Gun violence did lead to the deaths of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, but neither victim had a gun in hand at the time of their deaths. In fact, both in states where they are allowed to carry like any other red-blooded American, they were viewed as non-Americans, as Africans or blacks, so their legal right to carry was revoked, rescinded, rejected, denied, or merely overlooked due to some lack of oversight. Now the CBC, the group who wasn't nearly as vocal after the Flint water crisis broke affecting hundreds of African people, had a sit-in for gun control after the Orlando shooting at the gay nightclub. Pulse. Now let's compare. A city impoverished, a city of impoverished people drinking in toxic water for over a year, poisoned by their state, and on the other hand, a gay nightclub shooting over the course of one night. Maybe the CBC had so little to say because it was a state-sanctioned culling of the population. What does the state have planned for Flint in the next five to ten years? Maybe there's another big industry that should be moving in. Maybe redevelopment of the properties. Either way, the CBC didn't stand up for those people. Now, here we are with two blatant modern-day lynchings within 48 hours of America the Beautiful, end quote, celebrating freedom and independence. Foolish Africans, celebrating the oppressor's claim to freedom while having none yourselves. Insanity, if you ask me. Anyway, the CBC wants to parade us in front of gun-toting, trigger-happy Klansmen unarmed. They want the state to overtake your homes, your properties. They don't want to make a real stand. They will not draw a line in the sand. How many of us will continue to be another hashtag or a name on a shirt before the lynchings stop? How many?